Hello everyone and welcome to episode 49 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. So today we decided to go in for a topic without deciding the title of the topic. And we have Kumaran, who is the CTO and uh, chief mentor for Tiny Magic. And we have uh, Venkat, who is, who is the CTO for uh, Echo Connect. And he has been doing this startup business for a, a, a while. And he is going to give us uh, good insights into what we are going to discuss today. So Kumaran, before we started recording, we were just discussing about this whole concept of entrepreneurship and uh, and the engineering mindset uh, and the architect's mindset. And, and there are a whole lot of these terms floating around in the industry, right? So, and I was sort of intrigued by the point which you said that you cannot find, you cannot fight what is in vogue right now, right? So, which is, which is something which is, now become a prevalent uh, thing. There's like uh, the new age terms like wokeism and thisism and thatism. And <laughs> so some terms which become, they come a life of its own, right? And everybody sort of interprets it by their, by their own method. So in the enterprise business, what are the terms which you are hearing and what, what are the terms which you are sort of in, in, encountering when you're talking to your customers? Uh, there are many things, the things like uh, uh, engineering mindset, uh, intrapreneurs, mm -hmm. product mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the popular things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at the simple english around that right mm -hmm. so one is the word itself okay mm -hmm. it's a semantics thing mm -hmm. then there is the understanding or the meaning behind it it is about uh, not just being an order taker mm -hmm. and not being just doing what you're told to do mm -hmm. uh, not about just doing perfectly what you're told to do but it is about discovering new things to do right and identify things which really adds value uh, go beyond requirements and specifications so these are the the there are words and then there are sentences mm -hmm. so at a broad level i would put them into these two categories words heard and this thing but all point to that you know don't just do what you're told to do mm -hmm. so, so what 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 is the in in uh, the entrepreneurship world right so which is how the the technopreneurs are i'm just creating new i don't know i'm just <laughs> creating new words or uh, just uh, sort of remembering from uh, uh, something might which i might have read how are they they uh different from what the traditional engineering used to be problem solving so how these technopreneurs are different uh from regular yeah, somebody been, with a startup idea so it's kind of uh one of the things i've been stuck trying to put a thought to what i was telling right and this uh is what i've been uh reading so it's like mm -hmm. from ravi right who mm -hmm. used to kind of head microsoft right um one of the very interesting things which i found uh, mm -hmm. in this book is about uh, being intentional okay so i think that uh, is kind of summarizes that whole thing so when you talk about being intentional about something <laughs> right you're not locking yourself to something very specific like you know I want to make a product with C and D feature and that is my end goal kind of a thing. So intentional has a much broader scope of being more impactful and useful. Now that kind of opens your mind to think more rather than just solving one specific problem. So I, I think that is a key shift uh, if you want to move from whatever employee engineer to an entrepreneur is getting more intentional about it and with that you start spotting opportunities then you go and build the skills needed for that 
and there are and i and i think one of the interesting things which an entrepreneur does is is able to uh, what we call as uh, ability to identify and work with resources with whatever resources yes. that's available um admitting or accepting the constraints so that's another key thing right being intentional increase your scope but that doesn't mean i go boil the ocean but you come back to reality to understand okay these are my constraints which i have okay and then that constraint and a larger intention when both are put together innovation and creativity happens okay and that is something which came out very interesting in this book right we always think oh i should always go after a goal but you after a goal then you miss innovation if you're so specific about something you get incremental innovation you don't get a breakthrough in terms of hmm. uh innovation so, so from your sort of own personal experience uh is there some example of this this thing which which you're talking about uh, that being intentional is there is there an example of being intentional in your own uh, field which you found that that worked better than uh, uh, sort of being the focused product uh, mindset yeah m- there are many of them like that mm-hmm. right uh, so uh, let me talk with one of the first example so there used to be a testing product that i used to work with mm-hmm. uh, it was my first job actually mm-hmm. now uh, there was a hardware device in the factory and then there's a computer which is probably 600 meters away from the factory floor and we had to collect data and uh, it was an industrial automation system and we used to always get all sorts of noises in our application and we were trying to fix it and we were struggling with it for 7 8 months because we started getting randomly we will get wrong data okay so it's it will say something like a product was produced when it was not produced mm-hmm. so in the factory floor it creates a lot of confusion right it says like 50 products were produced but actually when you go look at it only 45 mm-hmm. will be there in the tray mm-hmm. okay so it creates a lot of confusion right um and we were struggling with it for 7 to 8 months uh then suddenly one day when i was sitting in the lab i realized that the cable which is getting the data from the factory into the computer room was pouring was passing next to a 200 kv power line mm-hmm. so whenever they switched that on that used to introduce a noise and that was giving that spurious data or fictitious data mm-hmm. now when we moved the wire 3 feet away we kind mm-hmm. of changed the position of the wire from next to that cable mm-hmm. all that wrong data went off mm-hmm. now if i was a engineer i will be thinking what code to write how to change the noise cancellation mm-hmm. hardware how can i make so we wrote a lot of fourier transform kind of application mm-hmm. in hardware we tried to add filters <clears throat> and things we knew noise was coming mm-hmm. right but we could not know see if you have to put a filter you need to mm-hmm. know the uh, the pattern the pattern the dirt right we didn't know that so it was just shooting in the dark i'm trying one filter after another filter it looks like it will work for 3 weeks suddenly noise will come okay so we have no idea what or how to capture it then then a general thing right why could this problem what is the environment in which this whole thing is there then that led me to understand there is something like this and move it further now this is a very small technical example of being intent my intention was to make sure that the right correct products are measured okay my intention was not to make sure that my noise algorithm will work well so if i had focus completely on making sure that my filtering algorithm is going to work well i'll be so focused that i i literally won't see the wiring on the wall hmm. okay right. or the drawing on the wall right That's i would right. not have seen the wiring on the wall mm-hmm. so that intention is what helped me switching to a different field we were working couple of some 4 5 years ago we were working with uh, aster Mm-hmm. okay so there we were trying to apply our program and uh 
there is this hospital where they have to collect blood. So we were working with that group, uh, with that department. Many groups we work with. One of the groups in that hospital was a person in charge of managing the blood bank and the blood stock. So the requirement goes that when a patient is in need, they will inform the hospital's bed blank that I need AB positive, blah, blah, mm -hmm. so many bottles, one bottle, two bottles. Uh, uh, the operation is going to happen two weeks later and you, they have to arrange for it. Okay. Now, the procedure is something like you go check whether you have stock. Mm -hmm. If you don't have stock, there are other chains within other hospitals within the same chain. Send a notification to all of them and get it. Or if none of these happens, then there is a central bank. So this was in mm -hmm. Dubai. So there's a central blood bank. So you send a request to them and then wait. If none of them respond, then you send out a SOS or a public mm -hmm. and then you let the patient to say, you know, can you get some volunteer to do it? Mm -hmm. So this is the standard process that they were doing. This is how do we make that better? Mm -hmm. okay. So they tried, tried. I mean, how much can you optimize this, right? Mm -hmm. You can optimize uh, uh, the stock flow, mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah, that whole whole minimal. inventory business. <laughs> inventory, you can do that yeah. at best, right? I'll proactively send a request and things like that. But there's no way you can anticipate that, you know, this uh, AB positive will be needed two months from now kind of a thing. You can't really do that. There is no prediction. Yeah, there's no prediction. There's no prediction. Or it's very weak, poor prediction. You can still, probably in today's world, you can do some AML at it. But I, I don't know how... <laughs> reliable that there will be right uh, and it's and it's a problem i cannot say i need o positive three weeks later and i'll just chumma acquire o positive and keep it right it doesn't it's not useful so one thing the intention what is the intention so when you look at it right my blood bank needs to i need to give blood in the time requested by my patient okay I have to do it within this SLA mm -hmm. and I have these SLAs to meet. Tell, yes, I can do, okay, mm -hmm. uh, by this time. So that's my objective. It's a very clear goal and I'm going after that, right? I'm going to focus on, I will tell whether I can do it or I will tell whether I can't do it within mm -hmm. three hours of request or eight hours of request. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm locked on to that, mm -hmm. right, I'm not being intentional about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So the intention here will be when a patient needs blood, it needs to be available to them. That's mm -hmm. the broader intention. I responding to three hours of a request is not an intention. Mm -hmm. So when they switch to that, what happened is they did one interesting thing that whenever this hospital had a little bit of surplus stock, <clears throat> they didn't keep it. Mm -hmm. They will send it to the central blood bank mm -hmm. proactively. Mm -hmm. They say, you know what? We have extra AB plus positive. Mm -hmm. You take it. They started doing that without anything, right? They said, okay, some patient somewhere needs it. I'm going to give it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to meet that intention. Mm -hmm. Now, when they started doing it, the central blood bank, right? Whoever was there. Mm -hmm. they automatically, their life was made easier. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have to go begging everybody, hey, please check your stock, let me know, mm -hmm. kind of a thing, right? Because when they get a central request, they mm -hmm. have to talk to 50 hospitals, mm -hmm. check if it is there. Now, these guys had around 20 hospitals. All the mm -hmm. 20 hospitals will send whatever surplus is. That mm -hmm. means their workload has come so much. Mm -hmm. If it is available, they just have to look at their closet. Mm -hmm. If extra is there, it will be there. They don't need not talk to them. That trust mm -hmm. is built. Mm -hmm. So their workload was significantly reduced. Mm -hmm. So now when a request came from this hospital, mm -hmm. there was an implicit trust that they've already tried. They are not asking something. They are really mm -hmm. in critical need. Mm -hmm. And this hospital started getting priority from the central bank. Mm -hmm. And they went that extra mile. So they won't go by checklist or waiting list or priority kind of a thing. You guys are asking, I understand you have an important. Thing. So they were able to, of course, they were meeting their SLS. That's a given, right? Mm -hmm. But beyond that, now they started getting blood mm. much more than what they could before that. 
because the central bank started going out of their way to meet their needs. So this switch happened because of an intentional thing. If it was a purely <clears throat> engineering approach to it, mm -hmm. then we would just say, you know, I will make my SLAs more stronger. I miss my SLAs 90%, I'm going to get it to 95%. You'll be stuck there. Right. So that's another example so, of non-tech kind of a thing of being right. inter intentional. So actually, it is very interesting. Menno, how did you arrive this uh, this solution? Like, at, at what made you uh, think to give back extra uh, okay. inventory? Yes. So very good question. So basically, what yes. we did is uh, we did the customer journey of how the blood is got from the central blood bank. Okay. And mm -hmm. one of the key trim tab steps that came out of that is uh, calling up the blood bank, waiting for the request was a severe red because you just call and you wait. Mm -hmm. It's like a black mm -hmm. hole. No, that is a very bad step in that customer journey. So we were thinking, okay. why aren't, why is that red? Because those people are not responding. Why are they not responding? Right. We started doing that okay. CQ way to them. Then they said, we get 100 requests, how will we reply to everyone? We will do it at our own pace only. So when we okay. went to that side and asked, why, are, why aren't mm -hmm. you guys responding? Why do you have to follow? Mm -hmm. Now, it's a funny thing, right? I ask you, you are, you are already having five requests to handle. Now I give you five more calls. I send you, you don't have time to read one email, okay? Because you didn't respond to me, I've sent you 30 more reminders. My mailbox is now full. If you had stopped with one, it's one email, I would have read it. Now you have spammed okay. my mailbox with 30 reminders now. Now Deepak will do another okay. one and he will do 30. Actually, I have only two requests to process, but I have 62 emails in my inbox. Even if I have to okay. open it and close it, it still take me time. Okay. So okay. we realized that this was the problem. And hence, we said, we will make it easy for you. Can we, what can we do to help his problem? I'll say, okay, when you, when I have something, I will give it to you. You don't have to ask me. Don't even bother asking my group of hospitals. If we have something more, we will give you. Be assured that it is there. So you can be fairly confident without asking me that I have given what is possible from you. That's a lot of uh, load less. So it's about 30 hospitals, right? We just saved the trouble of them checking with the 30 hospitals. Okay. Okay. So you build so the that, trust. Yeah. yeah. That build the trust. Yes. Okay. So how we identify is that? Why isn't that person responding to me? Because he's overwhelmed mm -hmm. with work. Then we thought, how can we make the blood banks? So interestingly, I start with the patient's problem. But what I actually solved is the guy sitting in the central bed bank's problem. That okay. eventually That's by it. itself solved the patient's problem. So it's a different way of doing root cause analysis, right? It's a different way of doing where the root cause of something like this is, where you're yeah, trying to solve the, the problem, but, but you went by the intention. Right, but just one fine nuance mm -hmm. there. There's not one root cause. There are many root causes. That that is correct. Yeah, yeah. It means of course it means in, in a complex scenario they will there will yeah. always be many many uh, places. What we you... call that as performance under supplies. It's actually not a problem, right? Yeah. That guy getting a lot of mails is what it is supposed to be. So it is not exactly a problem. So if we say is hmm. that no, when people send, they will send a request. What is the problem hmm. in that? Hmm. And if they don't get, they will send yeah. reminders. That is not hmm. a problem. No, yeah. how it's not a problem to be solved. Hmm. It is a performance under supply. Hmm. If I, I have okay. to ask you, if you don't understand I, or you forget, I have to remind you. Yes. What is the problem in this? I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> yes. What are you going to fix? Are you telling me asking you is a problem or reminding you is a problem? Right. right? And you might, and you will respond by telling me forgetting is not a problem. Hmm. When you get 50 things, I don't even have chance to read an email. I didn't forget it. I didn't get time to read the email mm -hmm. uh, i mean i'm just i'm just trying to uh, uh, sort of correlate it to a capacity issue right since you are 
basically in a complex micro service environment i'm just going to sort of make it technical now just for for the heck of it right so in a complex micro service environment where you have this user journey going through these multiple microservices right and and you are trying to optimize and say how can i increase the, the throughput of this entire user journey and these individual microservices have their own problems right which is like you have to look at what is the capacity each one of them has to actually work through that whole journey right and and there is no one root cause in this scenario right so uh, each microservice is doing something unique and they are it has some unique requirements which it has to walk through right and then the weakest link in the chain becomes the quote unquote the root cause but it's not just one of those things so 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 one of the things which i remembered from uh, we because uh, i work in the itil kind of framework so then in the in the most recent update to their framework what they've done is they've included some principles and one of the principles is to think holistically which is which is similar to what what we are talking about here is to think holistically that it's not just uh just focus narrow focus thing or big go with the intentional approach where you say what is the outcome we are looking at and and they think holistically of the entire environment and not just focus on that one small piece of uh, so just components. curious when they are kind of so one of the things about the right and framework is a little prescriptive and i'm curious mm -hmm. how do they define holistic or what is holistic so actually so you see they, they, this is just a guiding principle they are actually not giving you see the way what i have seen with the the current frameworks what they have done is they have made it much more uh, sort of flexible it's not pres as prescriptive as it used to be when uh, when it started right so it was like this is the set of processes this is how you do it this is how incident works this, so now you are solve so they have made it broader says so, okay you are trying to do a you are trying to solve a people process problem you have to think about it holistically so there are some guiding principles they have created some six or seven uh, guiding principles and one of them is think holistically and there is a one principle called it should be simple and practical right it's a guiding principle that it should be simple and practical it should not you don't create unnecessary complexity just because it has to uh, conform to a certain process right so so this so thinking holistically also comes from this whole design thinking approach right so this is that uh, outcome focused this is okay what is the intention of what you are trying to do right so and then you apply the 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 actual practice right this is the guiding principle is think holistically see the scenario see what the outcome you're looking at then you have all these practices and tools available you can apply individually and say okay what will work in this holistic scenario so that that saves you from that whole narrow focus uh, engineering mindset which we want to <laughs> call it that so venkat any anything from your side which you which which you uh, uh, any terminology or we, we just spoke about this engineering mindset and other things but anything which came comes across to you in your industry some buzzwords which you are struggling with yeah, yeah as you as you mentioned earlier like the the techno the buzzword no uh, mm -hmm. i'm uh, used to getting nowadays a lot mm -hmm. so that that I'm trying to understand what is technopreneur, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. who are technopreneurs? Mm -hmm. And uh, that is bugging me a lot. Like now I'm trying to, yeah, that is the one thing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm still finding the answer, like, what is that? So, so that is the one thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I am, and as, um, as in our uh, current organization, so as rightly uh, Kumaran said, uh, and uh, we are we are trying to solve the problem of aqua um, aquaculture farmers. So uh, we uh, so uh, as a, we were in an engineering mindset, we thought of okay, we need to provide the app to them and let's let's build the app. What is the mo most wanted for them? Okay, they need to to culture the fish. They need to culture the water. 
okay then let's give the product to the cultures the water then their life would be better they will be making more money then we will make something out of that so that is what no we, we have started in the uh, aqua connect so after one year of um, the the app development effort everything we put it everything is fine they can enter their uh, the water quality parameters like ph mm -hmm. and ammonia and um, and salinity mm -hmm. everything they can enter they can get the um, the advice and uh, and they can do it better but mm -hmm. after one year we are saying that um, not 97 percentage of farmers they are not entering the value only three percent of the people they are entering value and they are getting uh, most out of it from our app but not 97 percentage of the farmers mm -hmm. so when i when i go and do the research with the farmers who are trying to enter in then we get to know that they are the large farmers mm -hmm. that small farmers they they don't bothering entering with. so mm -hmm. we what we thought um, this is what the best they needed but we we analyze that okay though by entering them they can get it best out of it mm -hmm. but still they are having more problem than that mm -hmm doing the culture itself the problem for them mm. not a better doing the better culture mm. doing the culture mm. so what is the culture they do need is they need the feed to feed the fish mm -hmm. that is the problem that their core problem <laughs> okay okay then not the better culture then okay. then we have pivoted our business and uh, now we are no uh, working on other stakeholders like banks and retailers to uh, NBFC, how we can no, fear, uh, the, fear, no, uh, support them in other means of and mm -hmm. how we can buy the produce. Like so, so when we are in engineering mindset, then we will be focusing on only one thing, mm -hmm. not anything else. Mm -hmm. When the, when you are an entrepreneur mindset, only no, you will understand their life. Mm -hmm. Then you can provide the uh, solution to them. So that is what I mean. Excellent, excellent example. So thank you, yes, thank it. Thank you, thank you, Kumaran, for sharing these uh, these good examples of. Uh, we started without a topic, and uh, I think uh, the conclusion we came across is to start understanding this holistic mindset or this intentional mindset, and and uh, the technopreneurs, right? So, so a broad area we covered, but I think this is this is just yes. to cover how how people are trying to solve problems and what the buzzwords are going on in the industry i hope you uh, liked our discussion please continue to give us feedback talk, talk to us about what the buzzwords you are hearing about i know devops and all these things are happening for for a long time and they are stale and and now done and dusted in that sense so we all they, mastered they, it no <laughs> we have all we all become masters of devops right? so so now we have to look for new buzzwords uh, because the buzzword industry is is buzzing uh, all the time so so keep us posted and uh, thank you for listening and thank you for viewing uh, see you next time